Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to Archihacks and another very exciting tutorial. So today we're gonna take a look at creating architectural animation using twin motion. Let's first take a look at what we're gonna be creating today. I hope you guys are excited to create something like that for your own project. And make sure to stay until the end to see all the cool techniques involved in creating this animation. And just before we get started, a quick word from our sponsor. Twinmotion is one of the world's fastest real-time rendering engine. We have a special link in the description that allows all Rhino users to get professional license for free. For a limited time only, Twinmotion also provides free unlimited trial, so make sure to check out the link in the description if you haven't already. Alright, so that's what we're gonna make today, and all you really need is a simple Rhino model just like this one, and a twin motion scene just like this one. If you happen to use a different 3D program, as long as they're compatible with twin motion, you will have no problem following this tutorial. And for those who are new to the channel, we regularly post tutorials like this one. So if that's something interesting to you, make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on the bell um, so that you don't miss any future updates. So without further ado, let's get started. So just to explain our base model first, it's just a basic, very simple building that is like in the middle of a field and it is populated with some furniture inside. It's been pre-textured a little bit from Rhino, but the rest of it will be done in twin motion. And I've went ahead and set up the scene for us in our previous videos, we have covered how to set up a scene like this in Twinmotion, so make sure to check out the playlist if you are interested. Now, when your model is ready, we can start to animate things. So for starters, I've actually went ahead and created a couple still images. So these aren't animated, but a couple scenes that I want to use as like a basic starting point for our animation. All right, and just one last thing. I know you guys are really eager to get started, but here's a lifesaver life hack for twin motion. If you're using a lightweight machine like a laptop like I'm using, there will be a times when your computer will start to, you know, slow down a little bit or the frame starts to drop. And there's a bit of a trick to get around that, and that is by going into edit, preferences, going over to quality, and if you scroll all the way down, you can enable dynamic resolution. So this will allow twin motion to dynamically reduce preview resolution so that your computer can render at a regular frames per second. And of course you can tweak with the general settings up here. This will automatically set all your settings to a certain level and you can tweak individual parameters on their own as well. We will be proceeding the tutorial with the dynamic resolution turned on so if you see my screen pixelating, this is exactly why that's happening. So let's create our first animation. And that's going to be just a slow zoom in towards our project. So as you can see, our first scene would be something like this one, where we slowly walk towards our project. And it will create this nice cinematic effect. And one more thing that I might want to do is to create some sort of fog in the beginning, which gets cleared up as we approach the building. So first off, I'm going to go to video. Actually, let me go ahead and reset the view by clicking on the image. All right. And then I'll go to media, video, and create our first video. All right. And if you're not familiar with animation, it's actually quite simple. In Twinmotion, all you basically have to do is set up a beginning point and an end point for Twinmotion, and then Twinmotion will basically animate all the frames in between. Let me show you what I mean. So from the starting point, I'll go ahead and create a new keyframe. And with this second keyframe selected, 
I'll slowly track towards the building, just like this. You don't actually have to do it slowly. I'm just doing it slowly for demonstration purpose. And then whenever your movement is done, make sure to click on this refresh button to capture this view. And now if you click the play button, Twin Motion will automatically animate the scenes in between. So you get this nice cinematic walk through the forest towards the building. All right. Once that is ready, I'm going to go ahead and create the fog in the first one. And what's really cool is that it, not only the movements are captured, but also any kind of adjustments that you make within each keyframe will be animated as well. So one example of that is a fog. So I'll go ahead and go into weather for the first one. Go to effects and then increase the smog to 100%. So what this will allow us to do is to create this nice foggy effect. And when we go back to our video and try playing it again, you'll see that the fog slowly gets cleared up as we approach the building because the second keyframe has only 40% of fog. Just to demonstrate, let me go into the second one. And as you can see, smog is still 47% in this keyframe. And for the first one, the smog is set to 100%. So Twinmotion is doing all the background work to make sure that everything is animated smoothly between the two keyframes. So I think this is pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and close out and go to our second scene. And our second scene is going to be this exterior scene where we get a nice close up look at this amazing tree asset as well as the facade of our building. And we'll get into a little bit more advanced keyframing here. So we'll create a second video. And for this one, I'll go ahead and create a new video part. So Twin Motion Animation is comprised of a variety of video parts, and these work almost independently. At the moment, both keyframes are exactly the same, but here I'm going to create a second one where we shift our point of focus. I'll go into the camera, click on depth of field in the options, and then click on this focus um, gadget widget thing and put our, move our focus all the way over to where our building is. Once that is complete, I'm going to go back to our settings. And as you can see, Twin Motion animates between these two keyframes to create this very smooth change of focus effect. Now with this basic animation done, we don't want the animation to end abruptly here. We kind of want this to stay like this for a couple seconds. So that's why I'm going to click on the second keyframe for our part two and create a whole new video part to hold this for a couple more seconds. And now one thing you might have noticed is that each part takes up exactly 10 seconds. And that is because that is specified by this part length right next to the name of the part. So we probably don't want this beginning part to be 10 seconds long. And we probably don't want this shift of focus to happen over the course of 10 seconds either. We want this to happen a lot more quickly. So what we're going to do is going to go ahead and reduce the video length by several seconds. So let me go ahead, shift our um, timeline back to part one, and then reduce the part length to about two seconds. And for this one, I'll make it two seconds as well. And let's reduce this one to about two seconds too. Let's see how that looks from the beginning. That looks pretty good to me. All right, so that is it for our second video. And let's move on to our third scene. Now, this one's a little bit tricky. And here, we're going to be playing around with a different parameter. We'll go back and create a new video as per the usual. And from here, I'm going to adjust the... And this time, we're going to be animating the sun. So for that, let's go into the location setting and change our time of the day just a little bit. Yeah, I think I think I, I think it'll be very interesting to see this lines of light kind of like wash through the scene and then reach this cactus that we are focusing on right now. So maybe we'll begin from somewhere like this. Create a new keyframe and then go into more options. Location. And then move the sun just in the right place 
where it falls onto our cactus, just like that. Now, as you can imagine, Twinmotion will go ahead and create keyframes between the two scenes. You'll see that the sun slowly moves in the background and arrives at our cactus, just like that. And feel free to play around to see what works for your scene. Every project is different, and you might find different angles to find interesting moments. And for us, this looks pretty good, so I'm going to go ahead and save that, and move on to our next scene. And that is going to be this um, plan view of our desk, and we're going to be animating the sun as well as the camera this time. Let's go into video, create new, and why don't we start from what we have, and change our location settings to move the sun just a little bit away, just like that. All right. Okay, and there we go. As you can see, the sun is moving very slowly across the table, um, demonstrating the passage of time. What's really convenient is that Twin Motion is actually taking care of your exposure and all the various settings to make sure that your scene is well exposed. Okay, that looks pretty good to me. In addition to animating the sun, why don't we go ahead and move the camera just a little bit as well. So for this, I'm going to go ahead and move our camera upwards just a little bit like that. And make sure to hit the refresh button whenever you are moving the view. All the settings that you're applying gets, um, gets recaptured immediately, but except for the camera movement for some reason. So don't forget to refresh, otherwise your camera position will be lost. So I think that looks pretty good. Our camera follows the sun, moving that way. It looks pretty good to me. And I'll go ahead and keep creating more animations like that. Something similar for this one. I go ahead and go to video, create video. And the first frame is always what you're looking at at the moment. So that's exactly what we want. I'll create the second keyframe where we, let's say, hmm, maybe instead of zooming in, this time we're going to change the camera. Let's increase our field of view so that it becomes a little bit more zoomed in, just like that. Maybe a little bit too much. Okay. And even that parameter like that gets animated. Isn't this amazing? So Twinmotion provides you with a variety of ways to bring life into your scene. So make sure to check out and play around with all the settings that are provided for you. Now, when you're playing around with all the settings that Twinmotion provides you with, there's actually one thing that might confuse you a little bit, and that is time of day. So as you can see, I'm rewinding my time so that my second frame ends up going to somewhere in the past. And as you can see, Twinmotion doesn't allow you to simply go backwards. It actually takes you to the next day of the same time. So in order to fix it, we have to go back to our first frame and make sure that it starts before the second frame. So as you can see, I think we're starting from 3 p.m., right? 3.30 p.m. And in the second keyframe, we've actually gone back in time. So if you're having this trouble, make sure that your time is always going forward. And we'll go from there. So let's change this to 9 a.m. in the morning. And then go ahead to the second keyframe and change that over to 3 p.m., which is 15. All right. Okay. I think the error should be gone now. There we go. Beautiful. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm looking for. These streaks of lights animated beautifully. All right. But and last but not least, and this one is going to be quite interesting because we're going to be playing around with the scene this time. So let's go ahead, create a new video as per the usual. And before we get to the interesting part, let me just go ahead and create a basic animation. I'll let us zoom out just a little bit. Well, actually, I think I'll zoom in here. Yep. Okay, I'll refresh that view. So our camera is going to slowly track away from the building. And one cool thing I want to do here is that I want to apply global effects throughout this whole animation. So even though there are multiple keyframes, it might get a little tedious, you know, like you realize that you want these trees to be big. So you went, you went into the settings and then increased the, uh, you know, the growth of a tree only to realize that 
This actually animates that. By changing one parameter, that growth gets animated. But this is probably not what, you, if this wasn't what you intended and you wanted this growth to be applied throughout your whole animation, this is what you can do. So let me go ahead and bring that growth back. Okay, 50%, that's right. And in that case, we can click on this little settings button down here, and this will impact the entire animation within that animation part. So let's go ahead and create go to weather and increase growth so that we can see a little bit more trees on the other side, other side over there. And why don't we also change the season just a little bit so we can see a little bit of change of leaves. There we go. And we'll also make the weather just a little bit more ominous to make it different from our other scenes. Maybe not rainy, but just a little bit like that. More clouds in the air, slightly more atmospheric. I think that's pretty good. All right, once we return back to our animation setting, now the trees are not animated and the weather stays constant throughout the whole animation. Now, here's one thing I forgot to mention, and that is the foreground trees also grew with our global settings. And of course, as you may have seen from the beginning of the video, the foreground trees were small. So let's find out a way where we can make the foreground trees become an exception from our global growth settings. We simply have to turn, click on one of the trees and turn off the growth button. Once you do that, this tree in particular will work independently from the scene settings. So as you can see, we can customize the growth. We'll keep it at 0%. And I'll do the same thing for this tree as well. Let's make the age 0 so that smaller trees are in the foreground and bigger trees are in the background. Once we are ready, let's go ahead and start exporting. In order to do so, go to video, click on the empty. We'll go ahead and select all the animations and choose your folder of choice to export your footage. And the moment you choose your folder just like that, Twinmotion will start exporting. This is gonna take a little while, so I'll see you on the other side. Okay, so it is done exporting, so let's check out the animation. Fantastic. So if you haven't tried this already, make sure to give it a shot. We have a separate video showing you how to download Twinmotion for free and set up the scene just like this one. So make sure to check out our Twinmotion playlist in the description below. For those who are new to the channel, Archihacks is all about sharing life hacks for architects and students. So if that's something interesting to you, make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on the bell um, so that you don't miss any future updates. And last but not least, we share bite-sized tips and tricks for architects and students on our Instagram and our website. So make sure to check it out if you haven't already. Now, with that being said, thanks for tuning in today and I'll see you in the next video. Bye now.